On this segment of Armchair Quarterbacks, we're going to shift gears and we're going to talk a little college football. The University of Tennessee kicks off on Thursday night against Appalachian State at Neyland Stadium. High expectations for the Tennessee Vols this year. And we're on the phone with Caleb Calhoun. He is a featured writer for the website All for Tennessee. Caleb, I know we're excited here in the studio today, and I know you're very excited about the start of college football season. Yes, yes, uh, we are. You know, it, it's time. It's been a, you know, it's, I guess I think we all can agree that it's been kind of a hectic summer for a lot of reasons that we wouldn't want it to be. And football season in general is just kind of, it's nice to kind of, Get, you know, go to that. But at the same time, in Knoxville, I'm pretty sure everybody's excited about this season. You know, first top 10 preseason ranking for the Vols in 11 years. First time they've been in the top 10 in nearly a decade which is hard to believe for a story program like Tennessee football. Absolutely, it's hard to believe it's been that long since Tennessee had a top 10 ranking to open the season. Caleb, let's talk about those expectations for Tennessee. And in your mind, are they reasonable? Are they too high? What, in your opinion, determines a successful season this year for the Volunteers? Well, if you ask the fans about the expectations, I'm sure a few of them may have unreasonable expectations. But I think what most analysts and experts are calling for is very reasonable. I think, you know, Tennessee was... Three, three crazy plays away from being 11 and one last year. They easily could have won the SEC East. Uh, for them to be the favorites this year, considering the fact that they not only returned 20 starters, but they also they have three. They, they brought in four junior college guys for the 2016 class. Three of them are probably going to be able to contribute immediately. Um, when you consider those things, and you consider the hospitable, the perceived hospitable schedule, then the expectations are actually reasonable for them to win the SEC East. Now, if you're shooting for the SEC championship, that's a fair goal, but to set that as the bar I think is a little unfair considering the fact that they still have to deal with, on top of their schedule, they're going to have to deal with whoever comes out of the SEC West, which could be LSU, who they don't play, and I think might be the most loaded team in the country this year. I'm with you, Caleb. I'm a big fan of that LSU team out of the West. I think a lot of expectations on Alabama, but I think LSU may have more coming back than anyone in the West. Let's go back to last season for Tennessee. What makes up these expectations is how close those games were. Shoulda, woulda, coulda against Oklahoma very well should have against Florida. Then you have Arkansas. Just a few points away was Tennessee, as you mentioned, from having an 11-1 season. Even the Alabama game, Tennessee's in until the very end. Bob Shoup comes in. What is Bob Shoup? What has he brought to this program? What difference are we going to see this year? And will that make the difference maybe in some of those games that uh, Tennessee could have had last year? Oh, I think it absolutely could. Um, I want to be fair to John Jancic real quick because I will say the players on the field, even if the X's and O's weren't always there, they were very well coached a lot of times. I think the issue with Jancic did come down to X's and O's, which is Shoup's strong, which is, which is his strongest point. Um, you know, the, the worst stat last year, I think, that was hurting the balls was they gave up on, on 24 fourth down attempts by their opponents. Their opponents converted 18 of them, which is just an awful stat. I mean, both, and then Florida, of course, that speaks for itself. They went 5-5 five of five on fourth down. I can't see Bob Shoup allowing those same statistics this year, particularly when a lot of those were on long passing plays. Bob Shoup's strength is coaching the secondary. That's kind of where his base is, and that's where he spent – most of his time as, even though he's a defensive coordinator, with when you break up the positions, he's spending most of his time with the secondary. I can't foresee such a questionable defensive play call like you saw in the 4th and 14 last year by Jancic when he decided to put two linebackers in spy position. I, I just can't see Bob Shoup making those same type of mistakes. So if they had Bob Shoup last year, I think they probably could have beaten Florida. Maybe Oklahoma, but again, Oklahoma was a little bit of a weird circumstance. Tennessee was injured in the secondary at the time. Then Kurt Majit went out that game, so they kind of had to adjust a little bit more than they expected to. But I'm, I'm certain they would have beaten Florida had they had shoot last year. Caleb, uh, kind of piggybacking off of that same thing, Chris Vance here. Tennessee seems to have all the pieces in place, offensively, defensively, special teams, depth, straight across the board. After years and years of struggling, they seem to have everything in place to make up for a very successful season. Who are a couple of players they can't afford to get hurt? Well, Joshua Dobbs is an obvious one as quarterback. Um, and it's not just that he's a quarterback. Because Quentin Dormady is a backup, uh, you know, both, their styles are just so different that I think it would be a little rough for the offense to have to adjust to Dormady's way of doing things. Um, so obviously you don't want Dobbs getting hurt. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, Jalen Rees Maben obviously speaks for himself because he's the emotional leader, he's the vocal leader. And then Darren Kirkland uh, at middle linebacker, believe it or not, is another one that you don't really want to see get hurt too because the Vols, you know, they keep recruiting well at inside linebacker, but, you know, once yeah, you hear about all the names and then once the depth chart comes out, you don't really hear them anymore. I mean, we're still waiting, you know, we've 
Kenny Bynum's a veteran, but we haven't really seen much from him in four years. You know, um, Porte Sapp, uh, Dylan Bates, uh, a lot of these guys were generating headlines. But once again, Colton Jumper was the was named the backup to Kirkland. So I think that they might – Shoop isn't letting this on, but – I have suspicions that they're a little more thin at linebacker than they would like to be right now. Tennessee has that stretch of four games in a row, September through most of October, and we know that they're going to gear up for those games. Is there another team on the schedule that could be a trap game? Uh, actually, yes, and it's the – on top of the fact that the first – of the first three games, non-conference games they have, all three of those teams with the bowl games last year, which, which were good, including Appalachian State and Ohio, Ohio is – in, con in contention to win the MAC, and Appalachian State's the favorite, I think, to win the Sun Belt. But in between those, Virginia Tech is scarier than a lot of people think. Yes, they have a new head coach, but they do have nine starters back on defense, and Bud Foster's still there. So there's a lot of continuity and experience there. They have enough talent on offense where an offensive genius like Justin Fuente, I'm sure we all saw right up the road in Memphis what he was able to do there. And I would not count him out to be able to pull out a few tricks uh, in the – battle at Bristol. This is right there with those other four games, I think, in terms of how tough it'll be. And I actually think it's going to be a very close game. Caleb, those four games, of course, we're going to talk about. Uh, Tennessee fans will up until the time arrives. But the one game I know Tennessee fans are looking at, circling, you know, biting their nails, whatever. Florida, is this the year? Should this be and will this be the year that Tennessee gets that Florida monkey off their back finally? <laughs> well, I have to say that, you know, i I picked the ball the last three years to get that Florida monkey off their back, and it hasn't happened. And I finally made a point to after 11 games, I've decided I don't care what the records say and what it says on paper. Tennessee's going to have to show it that they're going to get it, show it on the field that they're going to get the monkey off their back because I've just given up on picking them in that game. But I will say, I do think if the Vols do win, it'll be in a blowout. I think it'll be kind of like 1995 Tennessee, Alabama, where they just unleashed all the frustration of nine years on the tide. I think the same thing would happen this year if the Vols do get the win. I mean, I would see either the Gators, and, and mark this down, either the Gators pull out some other close game that frustrates the heck out of Vol fans for the next year, or Tennessee wins in a blowout on the level of 50 to nothing. I could see either one happening. <laughs> okay, I, I agree with you. That's kind of the way I see it. And you go back to that 95 game, remember that one well when Manning and the Volunteers finally uh, broke the Alabama streak. I could certainly see that happen. He writes for the website All for Tennessee. Caleb, let's talk about the site. Uh, tell people where they can find your work at. Okay. Uh, yeah, just go to allfortennessee.com. Uh, we have a Facebook page, All for, All for Tennessee, and a Twitter account. Uh, we've, we've given extensive preview coverage for it, uh, preview for the Tennessee football season over the last few months. During the season, you can expect us to preview every game and keep track of things that are going on. So, yeah, uh, allfortennessee.com is where you want to go. It is a great site. I check it out quite often as a Vol fan. Caleb Calhoun, I want to thank you for taking a few moments out to talk with us today. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you very much. See you, Caleb. Folks, when we come back, Coach and I will have our picks for week three of the high school football season. Stay tuned for more coming up on AQ on DTC Sports.